testing, testing, one, two. in mind to worship the true and living God now in spirit and in truth. We just want to keep our mind stayed on the one that woke us up this morning with a reasonable portion of health uh, and close in our right mind. For he said to us, forsake not yourselves of assembly as such as the manner of some are. But we're here this morning and we're thankful that God has uh, allowed us through his grace and mercy to be here to worship him now. Let us continue to be steadfast, unmovable, always bound in the works of the Lord. For the Lord is good, and he's merciful, and his grace endured, and his mercy endured forever. Uh, we want to thank him this morning for everyone who has come out this morning to worship him now. And we just bless his holy name. We give it all to him. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's now time that we start our Sunday morning worship. Uh, our choir is here and ready. And our responsive reading, will we please stand for our responsive reading? It is found on the inside cover of our bulletin. Once the church has found our responsive reading, then let the church say, thank you, Jesus. And it reads as follows. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in speech, in faith, in purity. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God altogether train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it our hymn of praise this morning blessed assurance amen
morning, Blacks Chapel. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. You know, when I, I hear this song and, you know, the, the chorus all, always catches my attention, this is my story, this is my song, you know, it, it makes me think back to uh, and look back over my life and my experience and my conversion experience. And what it is done for me. Again, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. You know, when, uh, I, you know, I often think back when I was young and when I was a kid and growing up and all that. And, you know, I looked at Christianity and giving my life to Christ. I always thought in terms of what I had to give up. You know, I, I looked at it as, look, uh, I'm trading in having fun and enjoying life for salvation. And that, that's how I saw it. You know, look, I'm going to stop doing everything fun in life, and I'm going to start going to church, and this, you know, and, and I get to go to heaven for that, after living through these years of torture. <laughs> I'm so glad, and I'm so happy that that's not what it was, and that's not what it is. Giving my life to Christ gave me this blessed assurance. It gave me peace, allowed me to be able to sleep a little bit better at night, allowed me to be able to go through whatever challenges I face and see and hardships in life, knowing that there's a victory at the end. You know, I don't miss the things that I, I used to do that I had to leave it and give up because, again, I have a God, and, and that God is enough for me. And I'm just so grateful and, and thankful for blessed assurance. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, just like to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, just for being who you are. Day in and day out, Lord, leading, guiding, ordering our steps, Lord. Lord, for that, we are so grateful, Lord, because we're so grateful that you didn't leave it all up to us because we didn't find a way to mess it up. So we're so glad, Lord, that you are all-knowing, all-powerful, all-seeing God, Lord. And we, Lord, Lord, we thank you so much that you love your children. You love us, Lord. Not because of, but even in spite of. You love us in spite of all our faults. You love us when we get off track. You love us back on track. And for that, God, we are so grateful. We are so grateful, Lord, that you build up a head of protection around us, Lord. You protect us from seen and unseen dangers, Lord. Every day. Day in, day out, month after month, year after year. And we're so grateful that you're such a good God. Lord, and we just pray that you just continue to work on our hearts and minds, Lord. Touch them and prick them, Lord, so that we might be more of who you would have us to be, Lord. Lord, we pray that we can be the type of Christians, Lord, that you would have us to be. We pray, Lord, that we can be the type of people, Lord, that others can look up to, Lord. Lord, we pray that we can live our life as an example, Lord, an example that others can follow, Lord. Lord, we pray that our speech leads people to Christ so that others, Lord, can know what we know. God, you are so good to us, and we are so grateful to be your people, Lord. Lord, just continue to lead God, order our staff, Lord. Lord, we pray that you continue to lead this ministry, Lord. Help it to grow, Lord. Lord, we pray that you help it to be more of a benefit in the community, Lord. Because, Lord, we realize that you've called us out to do so much. And that we can only do it if we stay in you and work through you and do it in your way. For this, Lord, we are just so grateful. So grateful, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord, that you bless us day in and day out. That you bless us with opportunity to be who you would have us to be. 
Lord God, we thank you. We thank you so very much, Lord. Lord, these, Lord, these and all lessons, we pray for in our son Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. This concludes our devotion for this morning. Thank you.
Oh, amen. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, glory to his name. We have come to the realization that in spite of what happens to us, that the battle is not ours. It's the Lord's. That's why we come to praise his name. We come to praise his name in spirit and in truth. And we thank him that the battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. And we thank him for all that he has done for us. Right now we come that we may be able to acknowledge the visitors. If you're not on Black Chapel's roll at this time, we'd like for you to stand that we may be able to recognize you. You don't have to say anything if you don't want to. We just want to recognize that you're here worshiping with us this morning. Amen? Amen. And uh, amen. We thank the Lord for all of our visitors by way of virtual and the ones who are here physical worshiping with us right now. Amen? And we love you with the love of the Lord. Come on, Black Chapel. Let's greet them in the name of the Lord. We love you with the love of the Lord. And as our sincere prayer is, we love you with the love of the Lord. Love you with the love of the Lord. All of our visitors, uh, our sincere prayer here at Black's Chapel is that we pray that something sang about, something testified about, and specifically something preached about Amen. from the pulpit by our pastor uh, would strengthen your walk with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. Now we have the readings of our announcement by our announcer, Sister Veranda Love. Bless your heart. Good morning again, Black's Chapel. As a reminder, Pastor McNeil would like to meet with all auxiliary heads or leaders immediately after church today. If you're not able to attend, please send a representative that's immediately after service in the prayer room. We will celebrate our 53rd church anniversary Sunday, November 7th at 10.30 a.m. The mission and fruit of this celebration will be utilized to purchase a new sound system that is well needed. <laughs> the Blacks Chapel MB Church will hold a business meeting immediately following service on Sunday, October 3rd. The meeting will be restricted to church members only. Please arrange your schedules to attend. Today, the Greater Tree of Life will celebrate Pastor F.L. and First Lady Dolores Blunt's 42nd anniversary. That's today at 2 o'clock. The Church Women United is inviting us to attend their Zoom meeting, Church Women United Noon Day Prayer Meeting, and that's October 1st at 12 p.m. There's the Zoom link. You can key it into your um, browser, and it'll pull it up for you, or you can dial in, and the number is listed. Our prayer list for today is Brother Donovan Thigpen, Sister Jessie Bell Williams, that's the mother of Brother Curtis Watson, and Sister Teresa Henderson recovering from surgery. And be in prayer for all our bereaved members and everyone else that's in needing of prayer that we are unaware of. Okay, today's, we have birthdays. Today we have Aletha Faulkner, September 27th, Aletha Faulkner, happy birthday. And on the 28th, we have Mother Essie Roberts, and Zendel Cooper. And on the 29th, we have Sister Rosella Houston. Happy birthday, members.
Those are our announcements, and as a reminder, please go immediately after church. The sooner we get back there, the sooner we'll leave. Our zero leaders, thank you.
As you know, we have various platforms that we utilize for our offering, including the drop box at the west end of the building. For those of you, those of you that are worshiping virtually, we are able to, you are able to go on Facebook and click on the, on the Lava Giveify link. And also, you may mail you, your offering in at the church addresses, which is 3425 Robinson Street. At this time, we will turn it into a, the hands of our ushers. Let us stand for prayer, please. Let us go to God in prayer. O gracious and eternal Father God, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Lord, we come right now just giving thanks. Thank you for this offering we just received. Now we pray that it be used for the purpose in which you intended it to. We thank you for everyone who gave. We thank you all for the ones who had a mind to give. We pray now that they would be able to give upon next time. Lord, we just want to give you thanks and praise for all you're doing for us, how you're keeping us, how you're blessing us in spite of ourselves. We just want to thank you right now. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. All things.
Hallelujah. You know, it is not always what you say. But some of the times, the way you go about saying it makes all the difference in the world. Lord, I thank you. For your goodness and your mercy. And, and the part that I love so about it is when it states for us. For us. Which suggests that God before each of us proceeded forth out of our mother's womb. Our God already had stored up for each of us. For us. Goodness and mercy because if he had not of let it be known we're not here because of our own goodness we're not here because we've been so good nor careful faithful Lord none of those reasons for none of those reasons for not one but all because of his goodness and his mercy that he had stored up let us not forget each of us was born sin and shaped by iniquity and the wager of sin always has been and always shall be death but because of the goodness and the mercy that God had already set aside we wasn't born still dead do you know that if it had not been for his goodness and his mercy, if he would have allowed us to be born, each of us would have been born still dead, as we call it. Because the way in which we went about being born in sin, what an awesome, mighty, God, we serve. Amen. And we ought to give God another round of applause. Just because of his goodness and his mercy that he had and he still has stored up. Just for us. Not only do I want it, but I also need it. I have a need, not only a desire, but I have an urgent need for all of the goodness and all of the mercy that my God has stored up for me. Let's give this great choir another round of applause. What a blessing it is once again for us to be the recipients of the works and the labels of others. We're enjoying the fruit of their labels. They have gone across the week preparing themselves to be a blessing unto the Lord and unto us his people by way of the use of the gifts and talents that he has installed and endowed upon them. What a blessed place we're in. Amen. We can tune in by way of various means. But as Bell South say, there's nothing quite like being there. Thank God for all the other ways and means that he's put in place to allow us to be blessed and enjoy and be a recipient of that in which he has put in place across the week for us. But nothing is quite like being there. Because the first act which takes place by way of 
you being here is that you would have given back unto the Lord some of the time in which he gave unto you. Amen. Took away from your busy schedule, and all of us have busy schedules. There's not a soul in this sanctuary that doesn't have something else to do. That doesn't have something else that you need to be doing. But you chose to do God first. <laughs> and you can never ever go wrong doing God first. Giving him that first fruit. That first fruit. Of whatever it is that he has blessed you with. You did not wake up this morning. He woke you up this morning. Oh, yes, he did. And not only that, but he made sure that we were enclosed. And I know he worked this work on all of you by making sure that you was enclosed in your right mind. Amen. Because if anything wrong with the mind of being in worship service on Sunday morning, Lord have mercy. But he woke you up and enclosed you in your right mind. And he went a little further. Gave unto you the operation of use of all of your faculties. And whether you took advantage of it or not, he plays food in your house where it could have been placed on your table and a roof over your head and the list has gone on and on and on and on and on thank you for your goodness and your mercy that you start up all this stuff was waiting on us this morning when he awakened us <laughs> every bit of waiting for the Lord to say awaken live and not die your goodness and your mercy toward us I, I thank God this weekend we celebrated experienced for the very first time the wedding ceremony of my daughter, Janetta McNeil. Amen. Another goodness and another blessing that he bestowed upon us. To be able to assist him in delivering her to the state and to the stage where he had made her ready to say, I do. And she was a little hesitant for a moment, but she said it. <laughs> you know how you women are. You, you love pushing our men, your men to the edge. And right before he fall off, you may reach out there and grab him and pull him back in. <laughs> But I thank God for Brother Cedric Talley and Janella, Janetta McNeil Talley. Will you please stand? The newlyweds, husband and wife. Beautiful ceremony on yesterday. And I, I, and I thank God for each and every one of you who attended for the gifts, the cards, the prayers, and the well wishes. All of them are highly appreciated. We thank God for Sister Terry Bennett, who was our decorator, and what a work of art she did. She and her staff did. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and also for Sister Keela Jones, who was our coordinator. And she is indeed a perfectionist. And she worked her work once again 
in our behalf. And we will forever be indebted unto her. And her husband, Deacon Ken Jones, let's give them a round of applause. And all of those who worked along with them, all of you played a very important role in yesterday being all that it was. And it was a wonderful, beautiful day and occasion. Thank God for you. Amen. There are so many others, but you know who you are. Most important of all, the Lord knows. And you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. And that in which you've done unto the least, he said, unto my children, it's been done unto me. So you did a whole lot. And I thank each and every one of you for all your doings. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Philippians. The fourth chapter. And the 11th verse of that book. Philippians, the fourth chapter. And the 11th verse. And there we will find these words. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. This is a man who knew by way of trial and error, by way of personal experience, that his God has an unlimited supply of whatever the need of his moment may be stored up. just for him. This is a man who has come to know by way of trial and error, by way of life experiences that regardless of what the need of his moment may be or become, He has a God who has already stored up an amp supply of whatever the need of his moment may be. Can you imagine walking through life with that blessed assurance? with that type freedom with the type freedom that the Emancipation Proclamation could not grant could not give not that I speak in respect of want I'm not going to even waste time dwelling on want is what he's saying Because there is a warehouse of whatever the need of the moment may be that's already stored up with my name on it. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. In 
in whatsoever state. You're talking about a man who had practically been everything but dead. Whatsoever state. I mean, that is not very much out there to be experienced that I hadn't already experienced. There's not very much out there for me to go through that I hadn't already gone through. We've been there and done that. <laughs> that, that could very easily be any given one of us, our testimony. <laughs> that I've already practically been everything but dead. But through it all, I'm still here. <laughs> you know, as I say, it's not always what you say. Lots of times it's the way you go about saying it. And could no one say it like Paul? So let us think on these things. Let us think on this. The things that we need to know. Or rather, things that we need to know. He developed into the state in which he was in by way of the things in which he had come to know. By way of the things in which he had learned along the way. Things we need to know. An old wise man said one day, when I was young, I was poor. But I had all of the faculties that were needed for life enjoyment. But I had not the means. But when I became old, I also became rich. And then I had all of the means that were necessary for life enjoyment. But wouldn't you know, the faculties were gone. For in both stages of my life, I experienced disappointment. When I had the faculties for life enjoyment, I had not the means. And when the means came, the faculties were gone. Aren't you glad this morning, Black Chapel, and visiting friends? Aren't you glad this morning that you are happy with Jesus alone? Aren't you glad this morning that you're blessed with Jesus alone? And I come by here this, after, this morning to let you know that there is plenty of Jesus available. But you have to accept him. And not on a temporary base. But rather on a permanent base. In both stages of my life, I experienced disappointment. Do you know that it matters not who you are, 
what you are, nor which social circle of life that you may run in. Sooner or later, trouble will hunt you down. Seek you out and find your hiding place. Let me say that again. It matters not who you are, what you are, nor which social circle of life you may run in. Sooner or later, trouble will hunt you down, seek you out, and find your hiding place. You see, trouble is kind of like dust. No matter how clean you are, no matter how clean you may try and live, Oh, you can get up in the morning and dust your house and come back at noon hour and you find more dust. Clean up at noon hour and come back that evening and you find more dust. Clean up that evening and get up early that next morning and you find more dust. Well, trouble is kind of like dust. No matter how clean you are, no matter how clean you may attempt to live, you're never ever going to quite get rid of all of it. So what you have to do is you have to keep on preaching. You have to keep on praying. You have to keep on trusting. You have to keep on believing because trouble is just like dust. No matter how clean you are, no matter how clean you may try and live, you never ever quite get rid of all of it. In both stages of my life, I experienced disappointment. You see, Black Chapel, as long as our God provides us with a little piece of rope to hold on to, as long as our God provides us with a few grains of sand to stand on, and as long as our God provides us with a little ray of light to focus on, we are willing to walk side by side with God. But let me tell you something. You need to know that while doing your faith walk with God, there will come a time when God will pull in that little piece of rope, when God will blow away those few grains of sand, when God will turn off that little light and all you have left to hold on to, all you have left to stand on, all you have left to focus on will be an invisible substance, will be the invisible substance of faith because faith is a substance of things that are hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. And that type of faith come by way, come by way of God's way, come by way of way, that kind of faith come by way of God's way, meaning that there will come a time when all you have left to hold on to, all you have left to stand on, all you have left to, to, to look at, to focus on, will be the word of an invisible God, the word of an invisible God, faith coming by hearing and by hearing the word of God. There will come a time if it hadn't already come when all you have left to stand on, when all you have left to hold on to, when all you have left to focus on will be the way of an invisible God. But let me tell you something. If you would just continue on doing yourself God's way, then you don't have to concern yourself over the challenges that are present to your today's experience. I say, in spite of it all, if you continue to do yourself God's way, you won't have to concern yourself over the challenges which are present into your everyday experience. Why? Because your God will preserve you. Your God is a preserver. Your God will preserve you. And do you know when you being preserved by the Lord when you be preserved by the Lord I say when you become preserved by the Lord your victory doesn't always come in the form of deliverance your victory doesn't always come in the form of healing your victory doesn't always come in the form of breakthrough when you're being preserved by the Lord sometimes your victory will come in the form of endurance in the form of endurance meaning your God will give unto you a Enough stick to itness and stay with itness to develop the tenacity inside of you to just hang on in there. To just hang on in there. That's what the songwriter meant when the songwriter stated, Now, Lord, you don't have to move my mountain. Just give me the strength to climb. You don't have to take away my stumbling block, but just lead me, lead me all around, all around. As my grandfather used to say, he said, boy, when your faith is being tested, 
by the challenges of life. You better make sure you have your life jacket on. He said, boy, when your, when your way is being challenged by the challenges of life, tested by the challenges of life, you better make sure that you have your life jacket on. And then he went on and said, Jesus, come that we may have life and have life more abundantly. Meaning that when your faith is being tested by the challenges of life, you better make sure that you're wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. You better make sure that you have your Jesus jacket on. And I wonder this morning, Black Chapel, are there any in the sanctuary, a part of our viewing audience, who know beyond the shadow of any doubt that you have your Jesus jacket on, that you're wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. And if so, you better open your mouth and say something. You ought to own your mouth and say something. Because when you own your mouth, when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and that God raised him from the dead, you become an adopted citizen of Israel. Meaning, when you become a born again child of God, you become a part of God's chosen people. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you become an adopted citizen of Israel. And when you become an adopted citizen of Israel, you have all the rights and all the privileges of the Israelites. And David tells us in the 139th number of Psalms about some of the rights and some of the privileges of the Israelites. When David stated that the Lord has searched me and he knows me, he knows my down setting and he knows my uprising. He knows my thoughts from afar off and he's well acquainted with all of my ways. He always goes before me and he always stands behind me. He always goes before me and he always stands behind me. How does he do it? I don't know. I don't know. But he said, one thing I do know, whether can I go from his spirit? Whether can I flee from his presence? If I ascend up to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I take wings of the morning and fly off to the uttermost part of the sea, even there, his hand is there to hold me, and his right hand is there to guide me. Do you know how vast your God is? Your God is so vast until he extends from everlasting to everlasting. He's so fast until he sometimes bumps into himself. He's so fast until his presence fills both the heavens and the earth. And because of the vastness of God, he's too high to go over. He's too broad to go around. And he's too deep to go under. Meaning what? Meaning God is with you. God is with you. That's why Paul is telling this church down in Philippi, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You plus God always give you the majority. You can't lose with God on your side. You have can do power. Black Chopper, I come out here this afternoon, this morning, to let you know you have can do power. So get it done. Get it done. Have it may be, get it done. If I make my bed in hell, thou art there. If I take wings of the other moon and fly off into the uttermost part of the sea, even now, and where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Because you open your mouth and say something. You confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead and you became an adopted citizen of Israel. One of God's chosen people. God has his hands on you and he will never ever let go. And where the presence of the Lord is, there's liberty. You have can do power.
and all you have to do is just get it done. You plus God always give you the majority. You can't lose with God on your side. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning, by way of letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. The presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this house. And where the presence of the Lord is, there is victory. Whether can I go? Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. been given its orders it's been directed it's been commanded it's been ordained it has been made available unto the us God's goodness and God's mercy just for us what an awesome mighty God the door of the church is open by way of letter Christian experience a candidate for baptism if you're here this morning will you call the day you hear my voice heart not thy heart behold I stand at the door if any man, woman, or child hear my voice and open up the door and come in, I will indeed sup with him or her. The wealth of God, the treasure of God, which reigns both in heaven and in earth, is at our disposal. What an awesome, whatever state I am, I've learned to be content. We thank God. We thank God for the learned lessons of Paul. Because even way after his death, he is still ministering. Today more fervently than ever before. Because Jesus told his disciples the original greater works shall thou do than those in which I did. And since Jesus and how God has no respect for person, that means that regardless of how great of works his apostles worked, we have access to working even greater. Because the goodness and the mercy of God fills both the heavens and the earth. What an awesome God. What a mighty God we indeed serve. We have a Christian family coming. And we thank God. And I'm going to ask the family to come forth. 
can't stand. mother, Brandon Shorter, father, and Talia, Bri Bri Brianna Shorter, the angel in the midst. And before I come down, I would just like to share with you a brief scripture coming from the word of God, coming from the Gospel of Luke, the 18th chapter, the 15th and the 16th verse, and it reads, And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, They rebuked him. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. For out of the mouth of babes and supplements, comes perfect praise. Amen. Out of the mouth of babes and suff sucklings are ordained. Unless we come unto him as an infant, as a little child, no place will be set aside in the kingdom of heaven for us. And can you really grasp what he is saying in saying what he's saying in saying that? Except we come unto him as little ones. And when you look at such in such a little one, what you visually and physically and understandably see is a child who is totally leaning and dependent told wholeheartedly for every piece of bread for every drop of milk for every piece of raiment, for every drop of medicine, water, for whatever means of roof over its head, totally leaning and depending on its parents to maintain and to sustain. And our God said, except we come unto him that way, for every drop of water, every crumb of bread, every piece of raiment, every breath we breathe, except we come unto him that way. 
meek and humble, not a care in the world because of the way she come. You think this baby is concerned about anything? Any, do you think she has any cares at all pertaining to any subject matter? Not one. Because whenever a need comes her way, all she has to do is open her mouth and say something. David said, when I call him, he always. Not just because he called, but he called with that blessed assurance in knowing reason why she's so meek and armor and at peace. She has no other reason not to be. Because provisions have always been there. Whatever need that she has experienced thus far in her life, they've been met. Every one of them. And when we look at our Heavenly Father, hadn't each and every one of them been met? Yes, sir. And we should reflect that same meek, humble, and submissive, quiet spirit doing our daily walk Amen. in this beautiful life that God has enclosed us with. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, thank you for not just telling, writing, or teaching us, but Lord, we thank you for showing us yes, yes. what you teach, what you've taught, oh, yes. and what you're teaching. Through our everyday walk, we see your lessons manifesting right before our presence except we come to you her way there's no room in the end for us That's right. and we can see the meaning of such in this child how dependent she is for her everything from her parents and so are we toward you father we pray your blessings upon little sister shorter and we pray that that same spirit that she possesses right now will follow her throughout the days of her life. That blessed assurance in knowing that if I call my father, everything is going to be all right. And there will come a day and there will come a time when this earthly father release her wholeheartedly into the wisdom of the Heavenly Father. Yes, yes. Knowing that he is only a teacher. That he here to show her from the level in which she's in right now what a father can do and what a father will do. Yes, yes, Lord. Even with his limitations. But there's one who sits high and looks low who will do greater works in your life than those that I have done. Bless this father, bless this mother that they may continue to provide for her the way they've provided for her so that when she grow up and come to know the heavenly father she already know all of his attributes yes, yes. because she would have experienced them through her mother and her father, yes. her keepers the stewards that he has ordained over her life. We know, Lord God, that we are limited in what we can do. So, Father, when those times and those moments occur in this family, we pray, Lord God, that you would just do what you do best, and that's to finally intervene and work the words in this little child's life upon her body that only you can. We thank you for the standing family 
Where there's unity, there is strength. Amen. And unity, properly understood, is nothing more than the ability to achieve purpose. Purposes that originally intent that the Creator had in mind for His creation when He created it. Meaning that united, they have can do power. That will lift up a hedge of protection around this child, this mother, this father. Or else that the wiles and the dots of the enemy will not penetrate. And we claim the oneness right now of this family. This entire family, we claim the state of oneness. Yes, we, do. we claim your victory. We claim your healing. We claim your deliverance. We claim your peace, your joy, and your happiness. We claim your prosperity upon this family. Yes, Lord. And this child, we come now, Lord God. Mother and father has brought her forth to be Christian, to restore, turn her back into the hands from which she came into the bosom from which he came. Thank you, Lord God, for the mindset, the spirit, and the attitude of this family. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 At this time, we come christening little sister Shorta. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Father, after seeing all that's been said and after doing all in which they have done, all we can say now is amen. 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 Go in peace. allowed to be said and done throughout the activity of this worship service. We thank God for our visitors coming out this morning sharing with the Black Shepherd family. We thank God for our viewing family and our viewing audience for tuning in and being a part of our worship service visually. Let us not forget that each Sunday morning we are here by the grace of God, live and in living color. And I send out an extended invitation to whosoever will, let him or her come and break the first fruit bread. Nothing substitutes your presence. Amen. God has made ways and means to feed you otherwise. But he also said, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Keep this day holy the way that he chooses for us to keep it. And that is to come together in unity in the same dwelling place, worshiping, praising, and lifting up the same God because we have reaped the same blessings. God bless you. Deacon Brown. And Brown just informed me that Pastor Mason of Pearly Grove just passed this morning. So let us lift up and continue to lift up the Mason and the Pearly Grove family. No man knoweth the day, nor the hour, when the Son of Man shall come. But his, his word of wisdom to each and every one of us is that whenever that day Come and let him find us doing. And we can truly say that Pastor Mason was found God's way. Amen. Never, never dropped the torch. Fought a good fight. And what he did was he finished the course. 
the time that God had set aside and laid a lot allotted unto him. Set aside and allotted unto him. So all is well. And we just want the Mason family and the Pearl of Grove family to know that we're going to continue to lift you up, knowing that God has you covered with the spirit of acceptance, with the spirit of understanding, and with the spirit of love, truth, and unity. Continue to work the works that that man of God, by way of practical application and by way of his teaching, has instilled in both families, the biological and in the spiritual. May God continue to bless you and keep you. If there's nothing more, let all of us please stand for our closing song. Amen. Again, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide from henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together. God bless you. God bless you. You're dismissed.